Oh, you're going to put in an HF station. Glad to hear it. What kind of radio are you going to use? Oh, one of those uh, mobile things? Those are really good. They're about 100 watts, so they're both there, but you got a lot of menus to dig through. Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Dick, K8EKE. -E. Now, this is another one of those from that huge pile of emails, something like 400 strong, that got somehow lost from 2021. So I'm sure Dick has already solved this problem, but it's an interesting one, so let's take a look at it. It says, I'm finally stepping into HF land. I purchased a Yaesu FT891, which is a 100 watt radio, the front panel of which is only about that. It's got one large knob for the changing the frequency, a couple other knobs, lots of little buttons, but you have to go through a lot of menu settings to get what you're looking for. A lot of people use them. They're great, especially as mobile rigs, or if you want to do poda or soda or something like that. Soda might be a little hard because uh, you'd have to carry a, a battery big enough to do the 100 watts, but you can turn it down to like 5 watts or something like that for QRP. Now he has an LDGZ100A tuner, which is a tuner that will match to a 100 watt station, uh, 80 feet of RG8X, which is good cable, and a 49 to 1 NFED halfway transformer from Tentennis with the intent to add 66 feet of wire, which would make that a 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter antenna. Okay, multi-band antenna. If you were to extend that 66 feet to about 130 feet, you could pick up 80 and also 30, 17, and 12. Okay, whichever way works for you. Okay, I intend to operate portable, but will also deploy my setup at home. I have a few questions. What type and gauge wire should I use for the antenna? For 100 watts, you could use 16 gauge. You could use 18 gauge. What I suggest is you go down to Home Depot and pick yourself up a 500 foot spool of gray single wire, it's just single wire. It's insulated. It's got the gray insulation. It's, it's THHN house wire. But instead of Romex where you've got three wires, it's just one wire. And the gray is hard to see. It makes it a little less visible to all the neighbors. Okay, that roll of wire will last you quite a while and you can make quite a few antennas out of it. It's, I believe, still less than $100. Copper's a, a little expensive these days, but that'll give you what you need plus uh, many more. Get the stranded number 14 size. Okay, stranded's a lot easier to work with than uh, the other. Now you can pick up insulators for the ends of your antennas from your local farm store. And what you're looking for are electric fence insulators. They're not very expensive. You can get the porcelain kind or the plastic kind and they'll work fine. Or if that's not readily available where you are, you can cut a short length of plastic pipe about that long, drill a couple holes through it, put the wire through one end and put the rope through the other that'll hold it up. And you only need an insulator at the end of the wire because the 49 to 1 ballon goes right where you feed it with the coax. You'll need some way of mounting that ballon to your antenna location. Now, if you're going to run this as an inverted V, you can put the, the 49 to 1 ballon like up on the wall, about 7 feet high, run your coax to it, run the center up to where you can get it up, and then run the other side down, again, attaching to a tree at about the 7 foot level. Because that way, you your family, neighbors, friends, city inspectors, whatever, can walk underneath it without guillotining themselves. I might point out where we are here, we have deer and they're down for the season. It's winter now. And some of those bucks have these great big antlers still. They haven't shed them yet. And they'll come through and they'll snag on anything. I had an antenna once that was utterly destroyed by a panicked deer at night who, I mean, there were, it went into the trash. There, there wasn't anything left of it, so, which was a shame. It was an antenna I kind of liked. What type and gauge wire? Copper, okay. I would not go for aluminum because it breaks easily when it's flexed, and the, the gauge, 14 gauge is fine. You won't get anything thinner easily at uh, Home Depot or 
Lowe's or Ace Hardware or True Value or whatever, wherever you get this. Does my coax need to be a certain minimum length? I recommend for NFED half-wave antennas that you have at least about 30 feet of coax before you attach to where the lightning arrestor is. Now note, you're going to need another piece of coax to attach from the lightning arrestor, which is on your ground rod and goes into the house at that point and then to the radio. So you can either purchase another length of coax, you can cut this one on, put connectors on. If you've never put connectors on before, I'd go ahead and buy the extra coax. The fact that you're gonna be working mostly on HF, the extra few feet of coax that you've got out there, just kinda of on the ground, whatever, is not an issue, okay? Now I would run that coax down to the ground, along the ground, to your lightning arrestor. A lot of coax can be directly buried, if you want, or you can put it in a length of plastic pipe, whatever. You can get direct burial coax that's actually rated for that. Otherwise, just lay it out in the grass or coil it up or something like that. If you, by the way, ever end up feeding an antenna with open wire line, you never want to coil it. It interacts with itself and not in a good way. But coax, all the signal is inside the coax. So it doesn't matter. How do I need an RF choke? You don't if you go through a lightning arrestor because whatever is on the outside of the cable, so-called common mode currents, will be blocked where you have it connected to ground. Is chokes performance band specific? No. You can use for the choke if you've got about 25 feet of extra coax in there, which is pretty common if you've got 80 feet. Uh, just coil up 25 foot of it, about a one foot diameter, put some cable ties around it, and that acts as the choke. It's so-called common mode choke, and it's just built out of the coax itself. You don't need to pay any extra. Or you can pay for the, the beads and all that sort of stuff, but you don't have to. Uh, you can do it with just a little extra coax. Now I note that if you do need that entire coax run, 26 feet of coax is going to be $30, $35 worth of coax. So it costs as much as buying the, the beads and all that sort of thing. But if you connect it directly to a lightning arrestor, which is connected to your ground rod, which is right outside the window from your ham shack, that's going to stop any common mode currents right there anyway, and you don't need the choke. Okay. So thank you so much for your continued mentoring and patience with us newbies. This is from Dick, K-A-E-K-E. -E. Well, Dick, I hope I've answered your questions. You're going to have to buy little bits and bobs to go along with that, but it will work and should work very well for you. And 40 and 20, which are two bands your antenna will cover with 66 feet, is going to work just fine for you. Now, when you tune that antenna, you want to tune it kind of so that the lowest SWR is down kind of around the FT8 frequencies, okay? Otherwise, the other bands might not settle in right where they're supposed to. The only way to tune that antenna, other than putting it higher, lower, whatever, is to trim the length. And when you trim the length, you're tuning all bands at the same time. So go for the 40, get the 40 where it needs to be. The other should fall in line. Now, I will point out that you may need that tuner if the bands don't tune up nicely. If they're all under 1.6 to 1, you can set the tuner aside. Otherwise, uh, you go ahead and put the tuner in there. I believe that's an automatic tuner and it'll tune for you and get what you need on all the other bands. If you find that the SWR is more than about 2 to 1 on any of those bands, something's wrong. So you ought to go looking for that because the NFED half-wave antennas settle in pretty nicely to the harmonic hand bands. So there you have it. Now, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about a special we've been running for a while. This is a $2 bill and it is legal currency in the United States. A lot of people don't know that the currency that circulates is 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100, okay? I don't see very many $100 bills because I'm not rich. And you don't see very many $2 bills, but it is legal. And we have this to send to you. If you join via Patreon at the URL shown below, which is uh, patreon.com slash ke0og. If you join that for the first time or you go up a level, we'll send you one of these or also the same on PayPal. If you go up a level, we'll send you one of these if you join for the first time. 
uh, we'll send you one of these. We just want to send you a little tangible thank you. Most $2 bills aren't used very much, so they're very crisp. And something you can show off to your friends and say, hey, I got this from KE0OG, and all I had to do was join his Patreon for $2 a month, or whatever you choose to do. There you have it. Until we next meet, 73.